Hey everyone, welcome to Latin Colors. My name is Lorena Fernandez, and I'm here with Juan Vicente Elis Ochoa. Um, he's a young man with an interest in information technology and a co-founder of Embrace Art Volunteer Team. Welcome, Juan. It's great having you here with us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and so, can you start off by telling us what the Embracing Art Volunteer Team is and how it's impacted our community? Um, I am the co-founder of the Embracing Art Volunteer Team, uh, which was founded by uh, Nora Ellis, who is a founder. And what we essentially do, we find very, very talented Hispanic and Latin American artists. And we do these art workshops with underprivileged kids in places where they don't have the opportunities to see these beautiful pieces of artwork and to express themselves in the way that they haven't been able to. So uh, the impact that it has in our community, I think it's, it's something very beautiful that is very unique. And that impact, one of the greatest examples I have is René Soto. With René Soto, because of um, our scholarships that we give, we were, able, we were able to give him you know, all the tools he, he needed to learn more about art, to express himself more. Because of that, he was able to sell paintings and even start his own magazine, Latin Colors. So that's only one example, but if you were able to see all the children that we have in our workshops, they're just filled with this energy, this life, that I'm happy to know that in the, in the future, they're able to have what they learned and pass it on. So I think that impact is just the beauty of children and you know adults and just artists who are not recognized to you know show the world what what they have their their unique values and you know, their morals and especially their paintings. So that that's one of the big impacts that we give in the community. Just giving. That's that's one of the mottos of embracing art. It's it's good. It feels good to do good, mm -hmm. and that's that's it. There's there's it has nothing to do with money, anything. It just it feels good to give to the community, and that's what I love to do. Embracing art. That's great. Um, how have you been able to combine information technology with the visual arts? Well, w one of the thing is. Technology doesn't really advance art. Art in itself is beautiful. And, you know, many people see videos and pictures of these kids, you know, you know and these artists showing them, uh, showing them how to paint. And every time I see a picture or a video of all the workshops that I've done in embracing art, it never really, like, truly captures the essence of, of the actual energy that goes on. So I think with technology, the way I've combined it is knowing my expertise and being able to uh, program and how to edit videos and all of that. I've been able to combine it so I can, by combining technology and everything that we do, I've been able to go to social medias and, and show my school, you know, friends, uh, family, and basically move everything that I've done to everyone to you know show it around the world to show everyone what we've done what we want to do so I use technology as a tool to basically spread the word that art is more than just paint on paper you know That's so. very true yeah and do you have your do you remember your earliest memory with art earliest memory my my mom has always been a fanatic of just artwork. I remember uh, when I was six, seven years old, living in New Jersey, I remember seeing all these beautiful art pieces. They were so colorful, so vibrant, so full of life, so full of you know this Hispanic life. And I remember probably one of the happiest moments was when uh, the first art workshop that we did here was, you know, it was, it was so, it, it was just something I couldn't explain. I don't remember the feelings that I had. I just remember that it was just many artists. We were just sitting outside and we were just painting. We were just painting with kids. And it was just so eye-opening because I remember 
after that moment, I never said when I went to the museum, I can do that. Because it's just, it, there's just so much into it. It's more than just, you know, splattering paint. It's mm -hmm. more than just, you know, drawing something. It's about, you know, how the painting makes up, uh, like translate how you feel and what you're, when you're, when you're painting actually means something. So that's, that's just one of the earliest memories I have, just one of the first art workshops that I had for embracing art and just the happiness and the smiles of the kids, you know, for the first time just painting with an artist, so. Oh, that's beautiful. Do you have any advice for those who have a hard time understanding the value of art? I would say, first thing to do, volunteer and embracing volunteer team, mm. embracing our volunteer team. Uh, that's just the best way to, you know, talk to an artist um, and just become involved. Just, you know, understand the value of art and what it means, not just that painting is blue. It doesn't mean anything. It does mean something. Everything means something. No artist just paints something blue for no reason. There's always a reason. So I think, first thing, become involved. Understand what the colors mean, how the, you know, what, what does paint splattered on a canvas mean? What does that mean? Try to understand it. So, you know, try to talk to an artist, um, research it, you know, research the artist, uh, their, their past. Their past means everything. If, you know, there's so many great artists um, and it, it's that value of how they grew up, their childhood. If there was a child that loved painting but you know, grew up very poor and lived through many, many things, their their painting is going to change very different than a very rich child who grew up with all the tools to grow. So it, it depends on the artist. So I think just number one, become involved, research the artist, and just talk to them. I mean, they're people just like you and me. Mm -hmm. So they have feelings, they, they understand, they have different perspectives. So I think it's just, you know, become involved and understand that each piece of art means something. Mm -hmm. Do you think everyone can have a different interpretation of art? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, that's why many people might, might love one piece of art and others might hate it. Yeah. So, you know, I personally don't like Picasso. Yeah. But, you know, there's, there's, there's many people who appreciate his art. I appreciate his art, but it's just his style I don't like. Mm -hmm. So it's just every, every single detail um, that changes. So perspectives do change on every person. And mm -hmm. I think that that's what's beautiful about art. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about your first introduction to coding? How did it all begin? I was very early. It was very early on in my life. I think the first time I heard about coding was in sixth grade of middle school. And I remember uh, this, this spokesperson came to us and he was just, you know, talking about in the 21st century how... Um, programming was becoming more and more an important thing to learn. And it wasn't until eighth grade till my technology computer, uh, my technology computer teacher, uh, he began teaching all the eighth grade every two weeks one class of programming. Mm -hmm. I remember all the kids thought it was, you know, pure you know, Chinese. No one could understand it. And I remember I couldn't understand it better than the next person. But I remember there was a sense of wonder of you know, of that everything that we hold, you know, the, the phone, the computer, every game that we play, it's all programmed, it's all coded. And from there on, I was hooked. I took every single free programming course online. I would, you know, beg to my parents to bring me to these summer courses. You know, while every kid was, you know, playing video games or in the pool, I was for, you know, a whole week in New York, just, you know, in a computer screen just programming and just you know learning everything uh, then I even took AP programming in my school and it was just it's so eye-opening because it's everything we do everything in the 21st century it's just something that's so important and I think every person now should know how to do it. I think it should be something as simple as you know getting to know how to drive or learning a bicycle it's just something that we all need yeah. So that, that's pretty much how I got involved in it. And it's even helping with embracing art. Um, I know many programming languages that help make a website. 
and I helped my mom, you know, with all the technology side of it, editing videos, you know, all that technology and coding. It's it's all that I do to not only expand my knowledge but also help the business. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's so important today to know about technology for sure. That's right. Um, lastly, do you have any word of advice for people who are technologically challenged? Well, I would say that, uh, like the art, it's it, you just have to become involved. Mm -hmm. And technology, for example, if you don't know where to start with programming, I, I could I could give you five websites right now where you could go online. It's completely free, and you just learn. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just there's just so many ways to learn, and if if you're technologically you know you know in in a block, it's just it's very easy to just go out and learn. You can go to a public library. There's computers there. There's just there's books on 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 computers and technology and and everything. So uh, I would say you know there's just so many ways to go. Mm -hmm. Just go to your public library, mm -hmm. you know, and then research and. You know, look up free online programming courses or for Photoshop. You know, you could, you know, uh, get Photoshop or even look up YouTube videos on, you know, how to Photoshop or how to edit or how to do anything. It's all there. You just have to, you know, look for it and just work hard and, you know, get yourself to that point mm -hmm. where you can find anything and, you know, you'll, you'll be able to reach anything. Yeah. So. so it's more accessible than some people think. Yeah, it's very much more accessible. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, it's, it was great listening to your story about embracing art volunteer team and the impact that it's had on the community and allowing people to express themselves freely. And you seem like a very inspiring young man. And do you have any last wishes or any last comments you'd like to make about organization or anything? Well, uh, I just want to say that, you know, my organization has has basically made me into the person I am today. I feel very, very grateful for everything that I have. You know, my, my house, my family, I'm very grateful. And I think once you reach, you know, that, that place where you could have everything you want or everything you know that you a person should need, I think the first thing you should do is help others and that's the most important thing help others that don't have the same you know uh, tools or don't have the money or don't have the experience to do anything that you can mm -hmm. so that's I think that's my job in, in this world I think that's to help people who are in need of you know of expressing themselves there's mm -hmm. just all the kids that come to my work to the workshops there's just Everyone, even if they're just kids, even if they're just, you know, splattering paint or just filling their hands and it looks like mud, that means something. They're expressing themselves. If it, for, even if they don't know it, it's, I know it when I see it in their eyes that they're creating art. Mm -hmm. Each of them, I remember in one of the art workshops, they had this little plate and they just, you know, they were told to do anything and they each held it up and there's a picture of it and that picture just symbolizes exactly what we do. We find these kids who don't have the tools and we we give them the tools and they create this beautiful sense of just accomplishment and I think that's that's why I'm here to just help people who don't have the exact same things that I do it's so. really great yeah I've heard the quote the more you give the more you receive yeah so, so that's great. again to embracing art you know it feels good to do good so. yeah do you have a website that we can reach, Embracing Art? Yeah, you can go to www.embracingart.org if awesome. you want to learn more. Okay. So. Thank you guys for joining us today in this session for Latin Colors with Juan Vicente Elis Ochoa. And we want to thank you again for joining us and for sharing your experiences. And we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And thanks again. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.